Hi, welcome to Revenue Marketing Television, the CMO Insight Series. I am your host, Jeff Pedowitz, President and CEO of the Pedowitz Group. Today, we have Rich Wellens, who is Senior Vice President of Marketing for Development Dimensions International, also known as DDI. Rich, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Jeff. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. So, uh, Rich, you, you and I were talking before the interview started and about all the changes in, in competition that you've been facing recently. So uh, tell us a little bit about that and then what DDI is doing differently to address it. Well, it seems everyone uh, wants a piece of the leadership development, leadership effectiveness bundles. So you have professional services firms like Deloitte TY, you have players like Corn Ferry, and we have our traditional competitors. So it's a lot harder uh, to stand out in a uh, market that's growing, but growing only about six to seven percent a year. Uh, so what are we doing uh, across the organization? A lot of things. I think uh, we're moving towards uh, real digital transformation across DDI. And that includes uh, the products and services we offer. Uh, and it includes how we sell and it includes how we market. And, and so I think those are ways we are responding to some of the competitive pressure. Okay. So um, tell me a little bit about um, how you see marketing changing. Are you finding that you need to mar run marketing more like a business today than you did several years ago? Uh, uh, very much so. Now, you know, I sort of um, am a psychologist, actually. So uh, I ended up in marketing by choice. And um, but I'll tell you, when when I started marketing, what I loved about it was the creative side. And um, um, one of the things that's changed is, yes, uh, uh, we're, we are responsible for demand generation. We have a revenue goal uh, that uh, we are expected to hit and grow. Uh, and it is run more like a business. And I'd say it's also run more like a science. Uh, that's a big shift. It, and I'm sure people have said this before. And a half of marketing works, half doesn't. You, you you just don't know which. Today you know, and I'd say half works and half doesn't. But we know the half that doesn't. Well, there you and, go. And so <laughs> that that's always out in front of us. So now, as of course the experts in um, hiring for talent, evaluating talent, what's changing in marketing? You know, what and are you are you updating some of the techniques at DDI to help you find a different type of marketer in 2017? Oh, sure. The I mean, the, you know, again, I, I have a little bit of perspective. So there there were probably two talent transformations. Uh, one occurred when we started demand generation and we formed a small DG team with a DG leader. Um, and that was the major change. And uh, uh, we worked with you guys initially to get a feel for what the change would involve. Uh, then we went through the process of uh, buying software uh, and then began our first set of campaigns. And so um, that team was a different team. Uh, I believe two of the players were new uh, and one of the players, the manager came from our current bench. Um, we recently went through another uh, major change, um, and that was a total reorganization. So um, now we have a team responsible for field marketing. We have a team responsible for brand. We have a team responsible for content. That's brand new. And we have a digital team, uh, but on the digital team, we have social, web, and demand generation integrated uh, into one team. So um, um, over the past four or five years, we've hired a number of new people. Uh, we have a new VP uh, that's coming on board here at DDI who has a far higher digital acumen than I have. That will be another major change. So yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of change in organization. People are excited about it. Uh, and uh, it's a challenging time, but a fun time. So how have your models, though, changed in testing for organizational fit, competency fit? Have you been using um, similar models that you've always used, um, or have you, been, have you needed to change them in any way over the last couple of years? 
that that's a very good question. Competencies, you know, there's being in the talent business. There's there's two sets of competencies. One would be the what I'll call the foundational leadership or personal attributes or competencies. Those have changed the same, about the same. We still look for someone who um, is collaborative, can work in a team, who has good interpersonal skills, who has high initiative, who is able to make sound decisions, is able to analyze data. Uh, if we're looking for leaders, we need people who can coach and develop other people. Uh, but a far more comprehensive now technical screen. And uh, we, you know, we look for experience in revenue generation marketing and digital marketing and social marketing, et cetera. Um, and that's another thing that's changed. It's, it's uh, not easy to find generalists. Um, and so uh, find a person who's very good at social media, but uh, has no training or understanding of Eloqua or uh, Marketo. And so they don't understand uh, software and how to use it. So, um, you know, we have different people with different sets of skills. What's your perspective on the market? You know, since this is what you guys do for a living, are you finding CMOs? How are they approaching the talent gap, I guess, in 2017? The DDI or other organizations? Well, what, what, what do you see as DDI in the market? You know, how are marketing executives facing the war for talent, the talent gap? Um, well, I th it's a very competitive environment, and I, I think that, uh, you know, it's more aggressive recruiting. I think a, um, a lot of them, like we do, we train people in-house because to go and find someone with uh, DG experience in the Pittsburgh area is very, very hard. Uh, so um, I, I think there, you definitely see an increase. So you see, like DDI is a microcosm of changes that are occurring in bigger organizations around us. You know, big in healthcare. So there are two big healthcare organizations here. I won't mention them, but over the last five years, a total reorganization of uh, how they go to market. And I know they have uh, begun to grow talent internally and recruit talent because I know we've lost a few people to them. So um, uh, definitely, I think you see people you see organizations coming in line with this marketing digital transformation. And I think they're using a combination of uh, aggressive hiring, recruiting, salary. Uh, and that is um, uh, uh, complemented by grow your own program internally. Very helpful. So it's a uh, difference. You, you know, I could, I love social, but it's going to be a lot easier uh, for me to find someone who's experienced in social. And it's going to be to find a demand generation software expert or a person who's really advanced in analytics. Uh, you, you wish you could have all that inside one head that even gets more complex. Yeah. Why, um, as an expert, though, in talent and, and personal development, why do you think that is? I mean, why do you think there's been a shortfall of demand generation technologists versus the need in the market? I, I think it's just because it's new. So the, the, the supply and training for talent's not kept up with the demand. It, it's, it's probably like any new field. We're, we're still babes in the woods, all of us, uh, in terms of roles and getting people prepared. Uh, you know, five years down the road, I, I think that'll change. But I think that's why there's a shortage, why there's this competition. Okay. So let's shift gears a little bit into some of the processes that you're working on. So uh, I, over the last year, what are some of the critical processes that you've been investing time in at DDI to scale the business? Uh, well, there, there probably are three things uh, we're working on at DDI. Um, this year, um, we're working on brand. And so um, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort. Um, that's always tough because brand is not necessarily associated with immediate revenue generation. Uh, but we decided we needed a major uh, brand overhaul and refresh and have a lot of our team um, looking at new messages, uh, new visuals, uh, differentiators, et cetera. Last time we did a real uh, brand change was 10 years ago. Now, 
that's changed because um, today when we redo our brand, uh, digital is an important part of that. Um, uh, how are we going to get out uh, campaigns? So can we tie a lead generation campaign to a brand? Yes, and we're working on uh, uh, two or three different ones that would sort of apply to DDI's overall message. Uh, social is going to be a big part of the brand launch. Uh, so um, um, that would be one thing I think we're working on very heavily. Uh, we actually launch internally tomorrow and externally to the marketplace in about uh, three weeks. Oh, exciting. Can't yeah, wait to it, it is, it, it's been a lot of fun. The um, uh, second thing I think we're doing is, is continuing to work on um, uh, lead gen uh, and you know, the full picture. So we're now in our third revision, for example, of lead scoring. Uh, we're overhauling our campaigns. Uh, last year, we began to take another look at our personas. Uh, um, we're taking a look, of course, at our uh, waterfall constantly. Um, 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 by the way, another part of the brand redesign, of course, is DDI World. But now, Ten years ago, nothing. You know, now that if you don't you don't get that right, you don't have a new brand. Absolutely. Uh, so we're working on that, and and you know, you're always keeping in the back of your mind your goal for reputation and your goal for business. So the changes we're making the website are massive in terms of design, user friendliness, uh, but also uh, to make the website even more demand generation oriented. Great. So from a technology perspective, what are some of the things that you're investing in to scale? What's your stack look like? Uh, te technology wise, and that's sort of interesting too, because you look, I just gave a presentation uh, internally to all DDI associates, so, so a little bit of my swan song, and uh, we looked at investment over a time period. Um, so, uh, technology-wise, we have some. Uh, we have a social platform. We have Eloqua. We're in the midst of a uh, new CRM system that's enterprise-wide. So we're we're uh, uh, moving towards Microsoft uh, CRM. Um, the um, and that's taking a lot of work, uh, uh, technology side. Uh, and you better than anyone know it's not just the technology, but the work on a CRM um, integration with Eloqua, reclassifying what's a lead, what isn't, um, all the stuff, that, uh, um, how we handle leads, so all the process that integrates with the software. Um, uh, we're, I, I don't know necessarily you'd call it technology, but uh, a fair amount of work with um, um, uh, inbound, um, and, and outbound, but inbound, uh, looking at uh, LinkedIn and other sources that will bring in potential interest at the top of the funnel. Uh, we're looking at um, uh, demand base. Okay. Uh, we're beginning to explore uh, uh, predictive analytics and how far we go uh, on a predictive analytics continuum. Um, so uh, those are some of the uh, things we're looking at. It's sort of much harder because our marketing budget has not gone up 30%. So you have now competition for technical dollars, but you still, you know, you have to make the hard decisions of what is digital and what isn't. And the, the, getting the balance right in our business, which is a people business, has not been particularly easy. Um, you know, do we continue to go to trade shows? Do we continue to sponsor conferences? Um, uh, you know, those those have traditionally been a bit. Do we continue to do any print advertising? Do we do any snail mail? It, it, you know, that you're always now that balance with less to do traditional stuff because it shifted towards the other side. Yeah, no, we get it. We uh, see a lot of us being a services firm too. Uh, we we deal with a lot about that. Um, tell me a little bit about your approach to the customer lifecycle. So how much of your marketing is geared towards net new customer acquisition versus ongoing uh, cross-sell, upsell, loyalty, advocacy? Um, it's about 50-50, uh, and if we look at results, um, um, how we have been able to uh, increase business with current customers and loyalty and uh, what we're doing with prospects. Uh, the question's an excellent one. Um, 
the uh, whole concept now of customer experience uh, seems to have come alive in the past 24 months. Um, you and I go back long enough that we can remember when customer service, moments of truth, you know, it was, it was hot for four or five years and it sort of went away. Yeah. Now everyone's talking about customer experience and digital customer experience. Um, overall, we have a customer experience team that I uh, sponsored for a year. They will be continuing. Uh, we're mapping out the customer life cycle and the touch points, digital and not in that life cycle. Uh, we uh, have uh, several initiatives underway. The one thing we have not cracked that we're looking at doing uh, next year is I don't think we have differentiated what I'll call customer experience marketing versus prospect marketing. So everyone's going to get the same newsletter. Um, everyone's going to get the same opportunity to be in our campaigns. And, and so we don't have, here's a plan for current customers and here's a plan for prospect generation. I think that's wrong. And, and so I am hoping uh, we can focus some time and attention on how that would differ, because I do think there are different tactics. Thank you for sharing that. And finally, um, what outcomes are you being measured on? What is your uh, boss measure you on? And then what are you measuring your team on? Uh, the, also a, a very, very good question. Um, um, we, the, the metrics we have in place uh, today are enormous. We probably um, keep a dashboard of um, uh, 12 to 15 metrics we're looking at on a regular basis. Uh, you know, we look at web traffic, we look at open rates, we look at funnel performance, we look at conversion. Um, um, so a, a lot of that we look at social cloud scores and social presence. Uh, all those things we have expectations around and measure on a regular basis. Um, the, um, I, I think also we're, what we're measuring as a team and, and how that ties to compensation, um, is, is sometimes a bit of a struggle. Um, I am a firm believer, firm believer that if marketing is going to be a revenue generation function, then part of measurement and compensation needs to be tied to the revenue that's generated. Now, you, you know where that leads. Well, yeah. we market, we don't sell. How can we control the entire cycle? Well, in, in my point of view, it's just the way it is. It has to be a collaborative process. We don't have poor marketing and we don't have poor salespeople. So at the end of the day, we're jointly accountable. Normally, joint accountability is not a great thing. But I, I can see the future of a professional marketing team uh, not having revenue accountability, whether you bonus on it or don't. I, I feel there should be some amount of bonus tied to it. Excellent insights, Rich, as always. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And uh, from what I understand, you're, you're retiring soon. So we are very honored that you would grant us this interview. Oh, my pleasure. I uh, look forward to seeing it after you do all the editing and uh, best of luck. You bet. Thank you, Rich. Really appreciate it. You're welcome.